Hi, I'm Maddie Weiner, editor of Tire Review Magazine. And instead of being in our Continental Tire Garage studio today, we're here at the Petty Museum in Lovell Cross, North Carolina, sitting down with the king himself, Richard Petty. Now, I, I did have some questions about um, engines for you. So uh, with the work your team does at Petty's Garage, uh, what are three aspects of building a car that you feel make it a great performance vehicle? There's a lot of things that make, make it performance. Uh, first thing, you gotta have a good tire on the car, okay? Then you gotta have good brakes before you ever think about an engine, okay? But when you do good tires, uh, good brakes and stuff, and then you put a big engine in the car, then you've got to modify the suspension to be able to, to handle the horsepower and, and what you're going to do with the car. So there's, there's not a simple answer. It's just a, it's a combination of things to make a, a high-performance car. And it, it, each area has to match the other area. So uh, it's, it's pretty competitive from that standpoint. And I think the boys here at Petty's Garage do a good job of matching what the customer wants. Mm -hmm. And then if they'll argue with him over some things that they know he don't want it that way in the long run. So uh, in between, it always always works out pretty good. So what do you like most about performance engines today? And uh, that's the first part of the question. Second part, what would your ideal engine include? Well, you know, they've got so much stuff now. I mean, you raise the hood on one of these cars, you don't even see the engine. Right. Got all this electronic stuff, you know, but you know the, the fuel injection is a great, great addition to an engine. Then they got blowers that we put on the things, and I mean, you know, they build engines here a thousand horsepower. I said, what do you do? What would you do with a thousand horsepower? You know what I mean? But some customers want it. But in, in the long run, it's just a kind of a deal that I guess probably. Uh, and I'm going to say the best race engine we ever had was a Hemi. The Hemi combustion chamber and all that just made a, a, a good combination, not only for a road car, but strictly for a race car. And uh, so they're, they're still using those, all the drag cars and all that stuff, still use the same situation with, with all the, the Hemi deal. And a lot of the manufacturers have kind of copied that to a certain extent. And maybe half, half, half the thing is round or something. But you know, all of them look at a perfect combustion chamber. And right now, uh, the Hemi seems to be the closest thing that they can come up with. What What about your ideal engine? What would that include? The ideal engine is what you want, what, what you want to put in a boat, or whether you want to put it on a road car, or whether you want to put it in a race car. So each one of those components would be different as far as so it's hard to say you know what is the the perfect engine you'd have to have a perfect engine for whatever the application was so so taking it a step further what would your dream performance vehicle entail you, you know I, I guess i never really thought about it you mean uh because as the new cars come out they get better and better and better and i look back and talk with my buddies and stuff we used to race up and down the road 40 years ago thought we really had you know, good car or good handling car, and just any car now outruns them cars and outhandles the cars. So, you know, it, the the technology in it in the car business has been so great, and I guess the the overall deal is that people are demanding more things to a car. It's not just a, a something that'll get you from point A to point B. Now you got to have a TV in the car. You got to have a computer. Uh, with me, you got to have a GPS so I know where I'm at. <laughs> you know, so all the above. You know, air conditioned, air conditioned seats and steering wheels. I mean, it's just uh, if if you took a brand new car and took all those extras off, there wouldn't be much left. <laughs> you know. If you were given the chance to race again during the years you were in your prime or be in your prime and race today, what would you prefer and why? You know, I came along at the right time under the right circumstances with the right people. For me to compete today 
I would have had to come through a different generation. So my generation uh, would not adapt to, to what? And the same vice versa. The generation today couldn't go back and run the cars and stuff that we run because it's just a, a different upbringing. Okay? So you, you can't really compare what, what happened 20, 30 years ago in racing to what it is today. I do know that you know, NASCAR is coming with their new car this year in 22, and it's going to be completely different than anything we've ever had before. Mm -hmm. Before, they've, they've tried to stay somewhere uh, working with the manufacturers and stuff, somewhere where the uh, something stock, okay? This year's cars is going to probably look more stock than they have in the, in the past, but underneath the car, inside, and stuff, it's strictly a race car. So it's not a NASCAR stock car, it's just a NASCAR car now. What about NASCAR do you like today versus when you were racing? And then sort of the opposite of that question, uh, what did you like better about when you raced versus today's NASCAR? Well, it's a little bit different now. It, mm -hmm. it, it's so uh, computerized, uh, I guess is what, so technical today. Right, yep. uh, back in the day, okay, you know, when, when we were running 40, 30, 20 years ago, then uh, the rules were pretty loose. Okay, so as long as you stayed somewhere in that border, it was okay. And you'd make a change on the car, and it might not be stock or none of that kind of stuff, but NASCAR didn't say nothing about it because it made a better race car. And over a period of time, they've just taken it and tightened it and tightened it and tightened it with all the way they can check the cars, the way NASCAR rules have, have tightened up. So uh, you've got very, very little ingenuity now from the crew's standpoint because NASCAR is regulating all the rules. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it really, it's, it's, it's better for the racers in, in the long run because it's new and it's modern and we need new fans. So we have to change uh, with technology right. and the new generation to keep them interested in, in racing. Because if we went back and run 40 year old cars, nobody would be interested. So they like the new electronic stuff, the electronic dashes, and, and you know, they can go to the race or stay at home and they can listen to the drivers talk and all that stuff. So all that stuff is so much different. Uh, the, I'm going to tell you, what, like my son Kyle says, mm -hmm. the only thing about racing today, as it's always been, is they throw the green flag when it starts, and they throw the checker flag when it's over, everything else is different. Yeah. <laughs> so so that's, that's the only thing racing is the same. Yeah, so you're saying you feel the, the sport of racing in general just has to e evolve with the times. It's, it's got to go, it's got to go with the times just like, you know, like anything else, it doesn't make any difference. Everything has to go to the next level and all of us want better things for our kids than what we had. So we strived to push them to go to the next level. So, um, Richard, you've obviously had a storied and long career in NASCAR. Um, is there like a single race or a single moment that stands out to you the most? That would be hard. I yeah. mean, you know, uh, winning the 200th race, uh, Daytona, uh, in front of the president of the United States winning on the last green flag lap, that was pretty much the icing on the cake. Yeah. But if I hadn't won the first race, that wouldn't, it would just been another race. Or if I hadn't won the 10th race or the 100th race. So it took everything to get to, get to that point. You know? So uh, yeah, that was, that was a pretty big day, but uh, the first Daytona win was a big deal. First championship, you know, the first race, I mean, you know, so the overall deal, it's hard to say. This was the most important or the one you look back at the most. I just sort of clump it all together and said, that's the way it was. I, I am curious, you know, when, when you're, you know, thinking back and driving uh, in, in the many vehicles that you've driven, uh, was there anything that you thought about during a race or anything, any rituals that you did before the race or anything along those lines? Had no superstitions or no. nothing. You know, we've been fortunate that we've won races with seven different models, right. different kinds of cars. 
And that's uh, that's the first two, <laughs> you know what I mean? But you don't really think about it. You just think about you won in the 43 car, and then you just let it go at that. So you don't really think about whether well, it's Chevrolet or Dodge or Ford or Buick or whatever. So, uh, you know, it was just it was just a pity enterprise car, and that's that's what it was. You used to race. Uh, you used to race with with your father, and I know um, uh, Petty GMS Motorsports is bringing back the 42 and 43. 43. Yeah, how, how does that feel? My dad started uh, with a 42 car, and then when I came along, just we just picked up the 43, and over a period of time, we've had the 40 number, 41, 42, 43. Uh, then. Kyle had the 44 number, uh, then uh, my grandson Adam had the 45 number, and now I've got a, another grandson called Muff, Moffitt, his number's 46. But to bring the 42 number back to the Petty organization, it, when Kyle first started running, uh, I had the 43 car, he ran the 42 car, okay? Mm -hmm. So then he, he kept the, the, the number, then when he moves over to another race team, he takes the number with him. Well, that number stayed with that team, and that team was sold to another team, and then sold to another team, and they kept the number. And uh, this past year, or this coming year, uh, that company didn't pick up the 42 number. So now the 42s went all the way around the wheel. It's going back into the petty uh, operation. So uh, I think everybody, especially all the petties, really feel good that hey, granddaddy's number's coming home, you know, that, that makes you good. That's awesome. Well, Richard, I have, I have one more question for you. Um, it, from, from your perspective, who are a few race car drivers today you think are doing things the right way? You're putting me in the corner here, you know that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it, it's, it's hard to say. And, and where we're at right now, we're having a change of the guard. Yeah. In other words, the guys that, that's been racing and winning races for the last eight or 10 years, you know, half of them have retired or getting ready to retire. So you got a whole different crowd of people uh, that grew up in a different atmosphere, uh, a different time, uh, got different needs, wants. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's, it's hard to say, you know, here's a guy out of the grandstand wants to drive a race car, might be the greatest guy in the world, but does he get a chance to do it? You know what I mean? And so, it's just a matter of things are changing, and like I say, the cars are changing, but the drivers are changing, the face of NASCAR is changing, and so uh, yeah, as far as picking out any driver, you know, I, I can go back and pick out what I thought was the best drivers that there was ever been uh, that competed against me, I mean, but I can't compare them with some of the drivers that come off long after me because I never raced with them. They look good amongst the people they're racing with, okay? And now that crowd will go home, you know, the Jimmy Johnsons and mm -hmm. Jeff Gordons and stuff. Those boys will go away, and then there'll be another crowd that comes in that takes up their gap, and uh, hopefully they, they can act as good as some of the guys that's going away. Very interesting. Well, Richard, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much for your time today. We really appreciate it. Thank you.